Right, so they know. They know that we can see video evidence of them sabotaging the country, treating pro-Hamas protesters with more favorability than your average working class patriot, and they just don't care. Uh, kind of pointing at hypocrisy is pretty redundant at this point, because as Oren McIntyre often says, it's not about hypocrisy, it's about hierarchy. Mm. I'm, I'm referring, of course, to last night's Cenotaph protests. Again, they've been traipsing all over war memorials, and the Met Police has decided to go with a bold new strategy of rather than pretending that they're enforcing the law, just gaslighting the public into saying, well, we can't do anything. Yes, there is no law. Oh, that's a good good take. How did you shut down all of the right-wing protests then? Yes. Under what pretense? I'd much prefer the Judge Dredd strategy of, no, I am the law, in yeah. fact. Yeah. But it's, it's difficult to intervene when it's peaceful marching, you know. Peaceful marching over the war memorials. Yeah, but when it, when it's so peaceful, yeah. mostly peaceful party rocking on the grave of the war dead. Your 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 hand your hands are tied when when it's mainly peaceful by the grievance brigade. Yeah, especially yeah. when oh, you just turn up right as it's already happening. Oh no, wait, they were already there. Anyway, we'll get into video evidence of that. If you want to see the impetus of why society is being liquidated, you can go over to our website and watch Josh's contemplation series, where this is the second part of our liberalism debate with the appropriately fire and fury <laughs> thumbnails. Third part is coming out this Saturday where Carl utterly destroys, <laughs> destroys the liberal dream. I, I had a lot of people asking me, is the third part out this weekend? Is the third part out this weekend? I was like, I don't know. I'm not in charge of the schedule. It's out this so, weekend. So, okay, there we go. Good news. It is. The last 20 <laughs> minutes are probably my favorite bit of content we've done so far. It's pretty good. Hi folks, we've rolled out a new feature on the website, which is the ability to pay for an individual piece of content. So usually it's five pound a month every month to subscribe to all of the content on the website. But I appreciate there are going to be people who simply don't want to do that. They, they would be interested instead in purchasing a single piece of content for a lower amount, and they've got a particular, a particular niche that they're interested in watching. And so they don't want every single piece of content, they just want this one thing. So we've introduced this function where you can just sim simply purchase the one thing for £1.89, which I think is about $2.30 at the current exchange rates. Uh, and then that's just yours forever. So there's no sort of commitment there. There's no uh, rolling subscription. It's just that one thing. So that's an option now that's on the website. It's completely live. It's completely available. And uh, please go and enjoy it. And we'll see you all very soon. It's golden. So well worth subscribing for that. And the reason I say liberalism is at fault, because I say in the third part, multiculturalism isn't a melting pot. It's a kind of blender liberalism thinks of itself as the parameters in which all conflicts can be resolved. And so it puts all these cultures in one container, it presses blend, and unfortunately what it doesn't realize is the most dominant ingredient will often leave a bitter aftertaste. And that dominant ingredient here, as the consequence of mass migration, seems to be mental Islamism. I don't think that's an exaggeration when as soon as there is a parliamentary vote on the ceasefire in Gaza, it brings out a few hundred people into the streets to shut down all of Oxford Street. So just before we begin, what was the point of a parliamentary vote on a ceasefire in Gaza? So the reason it was introduced was because the SNP wanted to add an amendment to the King's speech that's just gone. Of course, the SNP is led by Hamza Youssef, yeah. who has family in Palestine, His wife's from Palestine yeah. and is a practicing Muslim. Therefore, it's a show of religious and ethnic solidarity. He doesn't like white people, does he? No, no, he's he not, not, not a big fan of how white Scotland is. He doesn't like white people. No. But no. they're talking about the same guy, yeah? Yeah, yeah, Got absolutely. I, I don't yeah. think these Openly people Openly racist. Are, yeah, I, I, I don't think these people are a big fan of the indigenous Brits whose <clears throat> lives they constantly disrupt either. I think that's more to do with it than the Muslims being killed in Gaza and Palestine because they're not, as Douglas Murray has pointed out, they're not protesting for the Yemenis or anyone that Bashar al-Assad's killed. I pointed that. They, 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 mostly don't, care. Peaceful. they yes. don't care at all when it's Muslim or Muslim. But as soon as it's someone else on Muslim, suddenly they're out in the street. Well, even al-Assad. Al-Assad's al uh, allied with Christians in Syria. Yeah, and yeah. Nothing? Allied Russia. Nothing. China, Myanmar, Yemen. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter. Well, they didn't, they didn't stand up for um, Majid Nawaz when he lost his job at LBC, not nope. long after being the, the spearhead of the, of the Uyghur Muslim protests, doing a hunger strike. So it is just a flex. Irani Iranian dissidents holding up signs, placards saying Hamas is a terrorist organization, anti-Hamas, and then getting attacked by fellow Muslims. Mm. You absolutely you know, can't say that. You know? no. um, okay, but cool. M Muslim infighting is totally normal to these people, I think, is what the issue is. Like they, they, they don't consider it to be you know, anything out of the ordinary, shall we say? I, I try not to go too hard on that, but like, it just seems to be a settled issue. Yes, but then the reason this... Israel. 
this movement has galvanized so many is because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And it turns out the enemy of all Muslims is just Jews well, and a, the native English. It's a perennial enemy yes. in Israel. Well, I, I tell you where I, I came in. So critical thinking lends on. So go, go back to 7th of October. And then I think last night is their 7th. They've done every Saturday and then the 7th. So reporting on the front line, talking to people, understanding um, socialist worker party placards everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. The main proponent of radical gender theory, yeah. the main proponent of puberty blockers, pronouns, and the slippery, just pushing the slippery slope as hard as possible in the guise of diversity, inclusion, equality, usual commie stuff. And um, we see here, among hundreds of clips now, the Socialist Work Party placards absolutely everywhere. Yeah. And so is that okay if you are vehemently, as, as this, this particular demographic would be, let's say that 80% are Islamic, for example, I don't know, vehemently against as social conservatives also. Well, if we just do a quick screenshot of what we can actually see on the streets, it's more like 99% Islamic. So a lot of people have, on the left, they, as you know, they've said, oh, it's, it's largely white in the marches. Of the 100,000, it's largely white. Uh, but people can say stuff without impunity or consequence as a result of free speech. So we'll park that. That's fine. But, but is that okay? That's what, that, that, that was my first question originally. Is that okay? So are, you're, you're holding a banner and a placard which has ex enormous, uh, enormous significance and importance when you're protesting because you're telling people what you're all about. And it's there branded with far left, uh, with a far left organization that is 100% behind radical gender theory and the inclusion of homosexuals within society, et cetera, et cetera, and homosexual rights, et cetera. So what's that about? Is that fair? Is that okay? Or is that disingenuous? Well, it's instrumental. So yeah. this is why Marx even remarked that the Muslims are a useful weapon against the Christians because the Christians are the, the biggest thing in the stand, it's standing in the way of communists. So they, one, with post-colonial theory where their brains have been liquidated, they just say, they're brown, they're not Christian, equals good. And so they're a vanguard class for us. And also they see this as an instrument of subversion of the existing order. So they think, okay, these guys want to tip the table. I also want to tip the table. As soon as the table's tipped, we think that our, right. because our ideology is actually the end of history, we'll just win out. So what he said. So, so for, first item is that, that that's, what I, that's what I saw. And, and of course, the second, the second item is who's using who, which lends mm -hmm. itself to your point. So what's, I want to understand what's really going on here. Because what I've seen isn't peaceful. What I've seen is aggressive. I'm not going to say anything else. So it is aggressive, what I've seen, 100%. Oh, yeah. so, so very confrontational, very combative. It doesn't seem peaceful. But of course, if you're calling for a ceasefire or if you're losing relatives in that part of the world, then you can have empathy. You can have understanding for that. So week after week, come onto the statues and the memorials as a separate item. But I, I, I want to get to the, to the sort of MO of the people who are involved in this, <clears throat> bearing in mind yeah. Myanmar, bearing in mind Yemen, bearing in mind China, Bear in mind all sorts of uh, grievances and uh, victimhood complaints throughout the globe in the context of the last four or five years with this oppressor oppressed narrative and this victimhood grievance brigade. I want to understand why there is marches, this sort of mobilization, hundreds of thousands of people, enormous amounts of funding. Anyone who can throw money at it, doesn't matter what the placard says, who I'm representing, as long as we're out there doing this, this means the absolute world to us. Well, I think actually it can be summarized really succinctly. Uh, the issue is never the issue. The issue is always revolution, right? That's why the socialist workers are looking at people who will literally hang gays and go, yeah, okay, there are guys because they are, as Connor was saying, a weapon instrumentally against the current regime, the West itself. Well, you also know the disingenuity of the calls for ceasefire and peace because what was this prompted by? It wasn't in response to the Israeli retaliation because they were already out on the streets conducting prayers in front of Downing Street after the October 7th massacre by Hamas. And as you already pointed out, they attack Israelis, uh, sorry, Iranians for saying Hamas is a terrorist organization. So they're not protesting saying free Palestine from Hamas and free the Gaza Strip from the Palestinian Authority because they've instigated this war and they're getting Palestinians killed. They're saying from the river to the sea, as in yeah. move the Israeli authority out of the way. So uh, yeah, I, th I think I think statues and memorials, one thing, two-tier policing, one thing, the chanting, the call for Islamic armies to rise, the jihadi stuff. Intifada. That's, intifada. So that's all countered. There's always there's always a counter from, from the left, if we can call them that. But I want to know, if I had um, uh, five or six um, Muslim brothers and sisters here with us now and said, that sign you're holding, that represents 
far left extremism, communism, whatever you want to call it. And they are also proponents of radical gender theory. And look it up that side. What do you think? I want to know what those people would have to say. Would they say it doesn't matter? We've got some examples. We've actually. seen it. Yeah, when Bill yeah. Chris went down yeah. on the street corner and some Antifa kid came up and he said that he's against the LGBTQ community and young Muslim girls started mocking his sexuality because so, he was wearing so nail polish. We. So that, that day, so we were, we were defending the Cenotaph and uh, Chris was there. So I made my intros because obviously anyone on the front like good guy. We've got an interview with him coming out very soon. Fantastic, solid, uh, so, solid. So he he he. That video was great, mm. and we haven't seen that yet, have we? You got you got. Uh, I presume that they were Muslims. Mm, you had yeah. three or four girls, and uh, you had the Canadian or American masked up, you know, wannabe Disney Channel Antifa, going for Chris, yeah. and then the Muslim girls. Obviously, again, there's a little bit of mob mentality there, which I don't like. And I'm seeing that an awful lot with this demographic, which I don't like. But they put him straight, whoever he was, or he them, or he there, them, Whatever. she. Yeah. And in he walks away. So to my point, right. So I'd like to know these hundreds of thousands of people, the, the placard suggests funding. That's an awful lot of money to put all that together. You've seen this at the aerial screenshots, haven't you? Of the hundreds of thousands, literally, of, of batons and, uh, and of the placard attached, except the posts and the placards. What do they have to say about that? Is it, well, this is really useful right now and we'll, we'll eat yeah. you up later, actually. So that's quite disingenuous. I'm not okay with that. Or is it, no, actually, we really do stand with you and your radical gender theory and your they, far left they, extremism? They don't. This is just the immediate thing that's the kind of um, the, the, the wellspring of energy. Right, the, and so it's Israel Palestine. Therefore, the Muslims are out in the streets. Therefore, they're just going to glom onto it and do whatever they can because the issue is not the issue. Recruitment yeah. stands, banners, yeah, yeah, outposts, you name it. Yeah. They're not attacked. They're not attacked at all. If if I was there in terms of the organization, our representation, no doubt we'd be attacked. Tables flipped. We'd be called fascist. But yep. They're there, not just with the placards moving on, but but the recruitment posts, the leafleting. The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the observation that they are everywhere. And these people are like, yeah, well, you'll, you'll do for now. Well, yeah, this, is the, this is the important thing. It's an alliance of convenience. And so it's worthwhile, as we have just done, disentangling the intersectional fault line that is here. But ultimately, the people that are benefiting from this and profiting from it, whether it's the NGOs, whether it's the Socialist Workers' Party, whether it's the MPs who have just stepped down from Keir Starmer's front bench, I think it's about 10, Ooh. including Jess Phillips, because she knows exactly who our voting constituency are, and the various Labour MPs that voted for said ceasefire, they don't care about this fault line. They just overlook it and tell anyone that's pointing it out to disbelieve their lying eyes. And we know that this has infected the Met because this they put a dispersal order out about 10 to 8 last night, still in, in action until 2 a.m. this morning. But they knew this was happening. They didn't clear the protests away. The protest blocked Oxford Street, and then it moved to the Cenotaph, and they thought, oh no, here we go, optically bad again. So they sent their, their best soldiers down. I'm just going to rewind to that bit. I'm going to, I hope it stays muted. Did you hear the chat, the, the main guy, he wasn't, he wasn't wearing one of the coloured caps, but did you hear the chat when he was rallying them saying, you do that and you do this? It was completely, they're completely unprepared. Well, right. speaking of unprepared, just look at the shape of these officers. I mean, yeah. The hive is vests. It's not the most inspiring uniform. They look like they're just going to go manage a building site. But also, they're all fat. They're all short. Some of them are women. Some, I assume, are good people. And they're slowly surrounding the cenotaph, anticipating the marchers to come past it. The issue you have is that they don't defend other monuments. This is the protesters climbing over the Royal Artillery Memorial near Hyde Park Corner. Yep. But I think we should also mention what, why. Why did they scramble like that? Going back to the Cenotaph, they knew who was on the streets. They knew what they were there for. The van that drives around London with the, with the missing Israeli children, again, is blocked. Yes. There's huge um, fascist far left presence. Again, overlooking all of this, they, they know they're en route to the Cenotaph. Why are they scrambling? Why? To spare the protesters from optics, not to spare the Cenotaph from desecration. So we've got the banners, uh, not the banners, the, um, the, the barriers that went up a few weeks ago, largely due to Turning Point's presence and, 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 and influencing the police to actually do their job. You know, heaven forbid that they actually do their job. And they've got the barriers. And then, of course, the other day, uh, ahead of uh, Arms Day, they had a, lot, a ring of police, that, that iron ring of police. So they knew where they were. They knew what was going on. Let's address the fact that it was even necessary to have that. Yeah. That we've got to have the metal barriers. We've got to have um, uh, vests everywhere. We've got to have that 
unbreakable chain of police. We've got to, never mind anything else. Yeah. We've got to have that there because you never know. They might vandalize, desecrate. They might hurt. They might. Uh, well, that, that's the point, isn't it? Because I mean, if this was say Hindus or Sikhs or Nepalese or whatever, marching through the streets, I'm actually not worried about the cenotaph no. under those circumstances. But they seem to be. The yes. police and law enforcement and the government seem to be. And I think that needs to be I think that needs to be discussed. And I think the reason is it goes back to what I was saying when we were talking about the liberalism podcast. They are so insistent on mediating all multicultural tensions that they seem to have denied would ever arise when they inducted mass migration, that now they compel the peaceful, patriotic, native populations and their British diaspora immigrant allies to suppress their culture in case it provokes the volatile yeah. new people who will disrespect it. And so they think that if they just appease them enough and increase material conditions enough, all of the cultural tensions will dissipate. And it's yeah. painfully naive, as we can see, because they're traipsing over the graves of our war dead. Do you mean appeasement doesn't work? It, I can't know. think of a time when it has. D d d <laughs> in this context, you mean appeasement doesn't work? Maybe tell it to David Cameron, who's just been appointed after he <laughs> lobbied on behalf of the Chinese to look at BRICS. But, but actually, speaking of the government, so the new Home Secretary, James <clears throat> Cleverly, who we all totally believe wants to stop the boats and stop this problem, right? He actually served in the Royal Artillery. And really? so he what did told, he say about this? He told LBC Radio, we're absolutely determined to look at this. Oh, good. Well, I mean, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, you should all follow Ink Monocle so you can see yeah. firsthand because he goes down and films this stuff. Great guy. Yeah. So you can look at this yourselves. I was, I'm, I'm really keen for him to look at I'm really keen for the police to actually do their job. You know, yeah. when they're looking at it and oh. they're seeing it and they go, actually, do you know what? We probably better do our job. Well, you know what? They, they actually did see this and, and they said, <laughs> it's deeply disrespectful to climb on a war memorial, but there's no law making it illegal. Are you serious? No Bollocks. law. Are you Absolute serious? Absolute lie. There's no law. This, this, the Public Order Act. Yeah, this there's isn't no a public order offence. No, there's no, there's no law, guys. You just Come signed on. the Police Crime and Sentencing Bill, which criminalises noisy and disruptive protests. Mad. What's that? Well, you guys are just being discriminatory now. Yeah, there's it, no law. Chad, no. yes, thank you for noticing. <laughs> no, but look, what, what, what absolute gaslighting yep. from the Met Police? Well, look at that ratio as well. Five point yeah, yeah. one thousand comments versus seven hundred ninety-two. Which brainlets liked that as well? I want to know. And they say, in the absence of a law, officers cannot automatically arrest, but they can intervene and make it clear their behaviour isn't acceptable. We can ask them nicely to climb down. That's what they're seeing here. But doing just in this not video. in the absence of a law. I just God. The I think it's I really, I think it's really important. Song. I was super excited to, 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 to when I knew when I knew the topics, guys. Is yeah. is we've got to talk about this stuff, but it needs to be unpacked. All seriousness, it needs to be unpacked. This is about British values mm -hmm. and the possible. Dare I say it? Let's discuss the possible, is it possible there is an anti-British, anti-Western sentiment that's fueling this, this campaign, right? Can we, can we say that? I think yeah. we're is way it, is past it, saying that. Is, is, that, is that fair? I mean, <laughs> is that fair? You know, I think Preaching to the choir. Here, yeah, that, that's yeah. a horse we've beaten quite a lot. From, from the indoctrination that we've exposed in our universities, <laughs> from the front line against uh, radical gender theory and well, drag even, story hour. Even just on the tube, you, you personally were the account that popularized that video of the tube driver shouting over the tannoy, free Palestine, and got him suspended because he was violating his job as a tube driver. Like, yeah. if, that's, if, that, if daily life is permeated by those threats of violence because that tube was full of Hamas, pro-Hamas protesters and the one or two apolitical people were standing there going, I feel very uncomfortable. If that is the level of public intimidation, yeah, of course it's anti-British. I, I, I think this is very important. I think uh, two-tier policing is, is we, need to, we need to discuss it. And I think uh, these, 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 are quite, these are two very important topics is anti-Britishness mm. And uh, and far left extremism, maybe two separate ones, and and two tier policing. That's 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 what I want to get to the bottom of. Yep. I want to understand that. So you mentioned about the tube. There was a chap uh, yesterday. He was going to a gig, and he yelled out, um, "Terrorist sympathisers!" Not We've got welcome that here, here in a moment. Actually, not welcome here. He was collared. He was questioned. I don't know what's happened. I actually know the guy. I actually um, uh, I don't I don't actually know what's happened. But but this 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 response from the Met. We are whenever whenever it seems like the British public says do the right thing, the, yeah. the Met says we can't. Yeah. Right. Well, that means then that you are engaged with a mob mm -hmm. and that you are scared. You are cucked. You are you you're you're not on Cowards. the you're, you're not on the front foot. You're frightened. I think it's, I think it's also a bit worse than that though because. Um, you'll notice that the Met constantly are putting out English officers to patrol the 
English side and the British side of the protesting. And there was a clip that went around the other day um, where a Met police officer was saying to some English protesters, well, you see, we, there's just too many of them. We can't do anything. There's more of them. There's more of them yeah. than there are of us. When they were, yeah. they were veterans but, flying the Union Jack. But the but the the important part is in the in the we and the us because what they're saying is we are yours. We belong to your group. We police you because we're your police. But they don't consider themselves to have the moral authority to police the pro-Palestine protesters in the same way because they're a foreign constituent. White guilt. Well, it's it's not even white guilt. I mean, it is part that is definitely going to be a part of it. But it's it's more about where they feel they belong and who they feel they belong to. And they obviously don't feel they belong to the community that is protesting in favor of Palestine. And so they're like, well, I don't want to be accused of racism. It's just too awkward. Off. It's just too awkward. They're, yeah, it, it's there are so many like just layers of factors. All of these, all the things you're saying, they're all layers of factors. But it's it's basically that's an outgroup that we don't belong to, so we're not really responsible for them. And that's why you have the emergence of a parallel policing system, and I think yeah. you can actually see that because Monocle was there ahead of the protesters, the vandals arriving, and he he says, "Well, actually, your officers were already there, so they let them climb on the monument. Yeah. They didn't discourage them or prevent them from doing it. They didn't defend this monument like they did the cenotaph because the cenotaph has become totemic as to how bad the optics yeah. are." And so they're just letting them run rampant and vandalize. But when they say there's no law, it's like, okay, but no law for them because they're not following our laws. Yes. But Tommy's guys have to follow our laws because they're part of us. And therefore they are patrolled under the Public Order Act. So I, I, I can I can see how easy it's going to be to jump between two tier policing and far left extremism, because as you say, it's it's oh, yeah. so overlapped. So in in the context of this this Met response, if 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 um if there is mistrust within law enforcement, that ends that ends badly. Oh yeah, that it's the Met have a moral duty to ensure impartiality for very obvious reasons, and I think we need every single person in this country needs to be having the the very serious conversation that the the, the police state uh, dynamic is very much on the cards, and the two tier policing within that, as you say, because of diversity, inclusion, equality fear, and frankly, very weak leadership. Well, I'll go one That needs to be called out. I don't think the police can be impartial because neutrality is not a neutral value. Actually, you have to value neutrality and the rule of law in order to enforce it. And so I think you have two parallel value systems here, or at least two and a half, of where you have the unholy alliance of radical Islamism enabled by the multiculturalism, diversity, equity, and inclusion doctrine of the left. And then you have classical British values where, yeah, we'll tolerate some eccentrics, but actually you assimilate to the to the predominant culture. You're orderly, you're polite, you don't desecrate the graves of our ancestors on a big ask. <laughs> and so they're incompatible. So actually the, the it's Met, unreasonable, Connor. It's unreasonable. Av average far right position. Yeah. It's unreasonable. It's basically the BMP. You sound I mean, like an extremist. <laughs> so the Met don't need to be impartial. They actually need to be wholly for British values, unapologetically yeah. so, and punish otherwise. The issue is they come out and continue to try and gaslight the public after we have the evidence of our own eyes provided by Ink Monocle, and they say, for our audio listeners, most people would agree that to climb on or otherwise disrespect a war memorial is unacceptable. That is why our officers have made a, a ver every effort to prevent it happening in recent days. Oh, yeah. Why? This evening, a breakaway group of pro-Palestinian processors were dispersed at High Park Corner, and a number of them climbed on the Royal Artillery Memorial. While officers were on scene quickly, they were there beforehand, we regret that they were not there quickly That's enough very quick. to prevent the protesters accessing the memorial. We know some online have asked why the protesters were not arrested. There is no law explicitly making it illegal to climb on a memorial, so officers cannot automatically arrest, but they can intervene to make sure the behavior isn't acceptable. The video shared online showing them do that. Right. Okay, great. There's no law specifically. Um, why was I nearly arrested then? Yeah, that's a great question, isn't it? Why was I nearly arrested? Because you're a bad boy. Up. No, it's because you're English. Buy me a drink first. It's, um, it's because you're English. Yes. And therefore, the law. Because applies. you're right wing, mate. Well, I trans. Well, he thought I was transgressing against one of their preferred uh, identity groups, which I wasn't. Um, he just overheard the word insidious and suppose it must have had too many syllables for penfold there. Yeah. But I was threatened with the Public Order Act for some very spurious terms. Why were they not threatened with public disorder when they were climbing on a war memorial on the face of public property? I know, because they're part of your preferred identity constituency and you want to appease them. Typical. It's not just that. They just don't think that they have the moral authority to impose British law on the minority communities. Yep. That's literally what it is. And so, like, I mean, like, in any other circumstance, like, <clears throat> hundreds of people would have been arrested <clears throat> for this. Hundreds. If this was, like, you know, the football lads or climbing on top of any any anything anywhere in London, all of these people would have been clubbed to the ground and arrested. Mm. They would have been got, run through the system. They'd have criminal records forever. And quite rightly so. And, yeah, and rightly so. 
but the police do not feel they have the moral authority to do that to this community, and they they fear the reaction of the community because the community does not accept the police's moral authority. Yes, and so the whole thing is an untenable s show. So so. What what Connor said f- filled me with dread, and because because it's pretty stark, harsh reality. You, the, I, I love what you're saying, Carl, about the uh, the moral authority. So we've got buffer zones, Bournemouth case, and we, and we've got the, yes. um, the um the veteran. Sorry, forgive me, I forget and his name. Isabel Bruce, who's now been arrested three times for this. You've got obviously Caroline Farrow. You've got the the the, the veteran for praying silently yeah. it, within the buffer zone. Um, when I'm when we haven't we've parked radical gender theory because we turn our heads to other things, but when I'm delivering and emceeing on the front line against Drag Story Hour UK, um, I'm, the, the police are just waiting for me to say the wrong yeah. thing. They're just, they're just yeah. waiting, right? So the other, the other day, we're at the Cenotaph, one of our uh, demonstrations of, of, of defending the Cenotaph. And at, at one point, someone had the mic and called the opposing side uh, that they were the Nazis, right? And that's common sentiment. Right or wrong, it's true or false. Placards. Yeah, I was, I was going to say I've seen plenty of swastikas. You've seen the placard, yeah. so so it's kind <laughs> we, of fair, we covered it. Yeah. It's kind of fair game, and the the <laughs> gold the gold commander came straight over to the chat really? with the mic and said, "You call them Nazis again, you're getting arrested." Right, public okay. order, or, 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 or you've hurt yeah. someone's feelings, or whatever yeah. Mickey Mouse stuff. So we know that this um this this needs to be looked at very very carefully this this what do you call it moral uh the, oh, lack, the moral yeah the lack of moral authority moral the moral authority it, it, the, the police don't have the moral authority to police the muslim community that's basically what so you've got hundreds of thousands so following on you've got hundreds of thousands coming out and a thousand police deployed each time yeah. so if you've got a hundred hundreds of thousands coming out and a thousand police that's game over. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't work. Particularly when they're not wearing riot gear, and they're only wearing riot gear for the football lads' alliance, who yeah. just wanted to peacefully observe the two minutes. And then we see the pictures of you, as you guys have seen, of the police uh, with the Palestinian flags, and they're wearing yep. the masks, and they're 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 on. They're clearly on side with that. Interestingly, agenda. no rainbow uh, um, mm. things on. No the side. trans riot shield yeah, that yeah. time. Isn't yeah. that funny? They take the yeah. rainbow badges off yeah, yeah, yeah. when they're dealing with that demographic, yeah. and it's kind of like, please love me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Please love well, me. They want to, but the thing is, they they've got to kind of accept that they have to be considered essentially an occupying force to that community mm. if that community is going to be following our laws. Like they, that community isn't from Britain. They don't respect Britain's values. They've got their own legal system. They've got their own traditions. They've got their own moral system. And if we want them to be here, they have to understand. Well, the British law comes first, and therefore, the police will assert themselves if they have to. And you are not allowed to attack the police in that case. Now, that means, unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of unrest, should we say? And so the British police are afraid of that. What they want is peace at all costs, basically. And that means just capitulating to every demand made by this group. And if you capitulate to, I'm not sure what the percentages are. Is it fair to say that 85% is a majority and 15% is a minority? For the context of this conversation, is that that acceptable? So if you capitulate to the 15%, the 85% is going to get very upset with that. Because culture is everything. Yeah. Culture, culture first, economy second. So I don't see a way out of this. Going back to your to your moral argument, I don't see a way out of this. I see it getting worse and worse and worse in an already godforsaken time. Yeah. And that's why you, what you said filled me with dread. And when you when you backed it up, I really like that moral stuff. And it, it, that's might, it great... might be unsalvageable as well because like it should have been on the <clears> first attempt. There was a short, sharp no, absolutely not, yeah. none of this. And then the second attempt, even harder. And then that would have smoothed, and, the, and at least those people are going right. Okay, they're not going to tolerate this. This is, but this has been tolerated for years now. And so, if there was to be a pushback from the police, there'd be uproar. And there's there's precedent for it because, as Suella Bradman linked in her initial tweet concerning the protest head of the cenotaph in 2011, they banned EDR marches. So it's yeah. not about their ability. They've even passed more punitive laws since. It's more about political will. And so, what you're going to get with these parallel moral systems, I'll, I'll wrap up on this, is. A form of vigilantism. Now, this is benevolent because I think Monocle just went round after they left and cleaned yep. the place up. Good lad. Yeah, yeah. But you are going to get the community starting to police themselves. And yep. in we- lieu of that, you're going to get instability at the top as well. And this is something that's been observed by the Met Police. So there was a Met Police insider that, that spoke to the Daily Mail. I believe Josh might cover this later on in the week, so we won't go through the article. But even he was saying, look, Swella Bradman, right. Internally, the College of Policing and all of the high brass are telling us to selectively police these protests because we don't want to kick something off. But yeah. we know that the English believe in police by consent so that we know they will acquiesce to our policing. Well, to be honest with you, everyone believes in policing by consent. It's just we have a particular definition of what consent means. 
right? So you you tolerate the police operating in your community. I mean, like you know, in Islamic countries, they have police. You know, yeah, they, but they 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 they, they respond know, they, to they respond to they have a different system by which they by which consent is granted, right? So there's not just constant riots against Saudi police in Saudi Arabia. No, example. but that's because that's because they have a disproportionate application of force, whereas the sure. British police won't be as forceful. Yeah, no, absolutely, because we have different principles upon which yes. the consent is founded. We have actually a conscious kind of liberal view of consent, actually. Yeah. But other countries might enforce consent by oppression. You know, it's but the the point is there's not constant riots and fighting against yes. the authorities. Right? So yeah. there's always a form of consent that underpins policing. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not done in ways. What, what 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 I would like to see is our <clears throat> is our Muslim brothers and sisters understanding Marxism, understanding the SWP, understanding two tier policing. I'd like to see those people, God bless them, and the Imams saying, "You do not go on statues. You do not desecrate. You do not behave like this. You do not have flags there. You do not say X Y Z, which I'm sure we're about to go through. Yeah. Actually, this is about prayer. This is about ceasefire. That's your right to freedom of speech here." and uh, anti-British sentiment. I'd like to see that, and I'm not seeing it. I would really like, yeah. I'd like to see it on TikTok. I'd like, because I know the propaganda, because I follow it. I know what's being pumped out to that demographic. And I would like to see those British Muslims stand up and say, yes, just, we have our views, family members, etc. So ceasefire, pray for peace, and maybe there's some uh, upset and some anger there. I completely understand that. But that is not the same thing as endorsing and standing with terrorist sympathizers, Nazi sympathizers, Hitler sympathizers, calling for armies of, Mus uh, of, of Islam, calling for jihad, going on our statues in, 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 in any way. That, that, and I'm not seeing that. And I want to see that from, 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 from patriotic Muslims in this country who love this country saying whether they're right or left or center, actually, we're part of that. We're not part of that. And I'm not seeing it being called out, not by anyone. Well, unfortunately, not to be uh, pessimistic, and I think we'll finish on this. Uh, don't think you will anytime soon. And yep. I don't think without the Met stepping in and being more forceful in the application of the law as to respecting British monuments and British culture, that you'll get that. And God bless those people who are doing what I've just suggested. And I, I have seen it in, in, uh, in isolation and from individuals, but en masse, I'm not seeing it. You're asking them to be good neighbours and they're not being. Thanks very much for watching this segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and want to find more of what we do, you can subscribe to our website for as little as £5 per month and get access to all of the premium videos that we do, including Bo's Epoch series, currently on episode 132, where the most recent episode he sat down with Godfrey, uh, Godfrey Bloom to discuss the Great War. And if you sign up at the moment to the website through Stripe and use code BIRTHDAY, you can get 33% off of your first three months subscription. So take advantage of that while you can. Furthermore, if you'd like to follow Bo and see what he gets up to, then you can follow him on Twitter at HistoryBro1. Thank you very much for watching and take care.